So now we'll be discussing about the profitability ratios. The basic purpose of the profitability ratios is to understand what kind of profit margin the company is making. Profitability margins can be improved either by reducing the cost or increasing the selling price. And then there's another important uh, aspect to it that we can compare the, the margin of one company with another company in the same industry. Now we'll understand about EBITDA margin. The formula for calculating EBITDA margin is EBITDA divided by net sales. And here EBITDA stands for earning before interest tax depreciation and amortization. Now this number represents the company's annual earning before subtraction of interest payment, taxes, depreciation and amortization. Now these uh, now EBITDA can also be called as cash profit that the business earns from its operating activity. This enables you to compare one business with another without the effects of uh, the capital structure or funding structures. A uh, company may use either debt or equity. So the capital and funding structures are not affected because of that. And then it is all, it is, even the tax environments differ. The tax rates may differ from one country to another. But if you're comparing two companies in the same industry, then you can always compare it on the basis of EBITDA margin and draw some conclusion with regard to its operational efficiency. Now, even uh, it is calculated before charging any depreciation. Now, companies may charge depreciation uh, based on various methods. So it eliminates even uh, the depreciation uh, impact on the profitability. So you can compare EBITDA of one company to another without having effect, uh, without any effect to the capital structures, different tax environments or different capex policies. Now EBITDA margin uh, also helps uh, us to understand companies operating profitability as a percentage of its uh, totals revenue. Now it's a very important metric which helps management to take business decisions. It provides uh, all, it also provides investors a snapshot of short term operation efficiency of a company. Now in this graph we can see the Tata Motors net revenue and EBITDA margin over a period of uh, from 2010 to 2014. And uh, if you see in 2010 the EBITDA margin was 9.38%. Then it went up to 14.5% in 2011 and then remained at around 14.31% in 2012 and 13 it slightly declined to 14.1% and finally in 2014 it went up to 16.06%. So uh, clearly the EBITDA margin has risen from almost like 9% to 16% from a period 2010 to 2014. Now uh, here the number of revenue is also given uh, like uh, in 2010 the total revenue was 91,810 crores uh, and in 2014 it was 2,32,834 crores. Now, of course, this uh, increase in uh, revenues on account of uh, the merger of Tata Motors uh, domestic operations with uh, uh, Land Rover and Jaguar, where the turnover went up uh, significantly because the two entities merged into one. So, uh, this explains, uh, you see, with the increase of revenue, how the EBITDA margin is also going up because uh, uh, the Land Rover and uh, uh, Jaguar, they enjoy a high margins so which led to an increase in the EBITDA margin. So this can be one of the reasons for improvement in EBITDA margin of the company. Now we'll understand what is operating margin. Now the formula for operating margin is EBIT divided by net sales. Now EBIT stands for earning before interest and taxes. Now this figure measures company's annual earning before the subtraction of interest payment and taxes. Now, EBIT is also referred to as operating earnings. Now, EBIT is a very good measure of how well a company is managed. It is very closely watched by all the stakeholders because it measures both overall demand for the company's products or services and company's efficiency in delivering those products or services. So basically, it's an operational profit, the profit which is derived from selling goods and services. Now let us see this EBIT margin graph of Tata Steel. Now this, uh, these figures are given from 2011 to 2015, which clearly shows that EBIT margin of Tata Steel 
has been shrinking. Now in 2011, the margin was 35% and then it declined to 30% in 2012 and then came down to 26% in 2013 and then slightly went up to 27% in 2014 and finally dropped at uh, dropped to 21% in 2015. Now the reason for such a drop is uh, perhaps because there has been a, a short, uh, there is a slump in the demand of steel uh, in this period and uh, the, the, the selling prices were have also softened up during this period. And the second reason could have been possibly the increase in the input cost of manufacturing steel. Uh, so both uh, accounts can lead to a drop in EBIT margin. Now coming to return on equity. The formula for calculating the return on equity is net income that is uh, profit after tax divided by the shareholders equity. Uh, now formula tells you how much return you are generating for your shareholders. It is EBIT minus interest and minus tax. So whatever is the left or the residual profit is called the net income and the residual profit belongs to the shareholders uh, after paying interest and tax. Now those companies which are having a higher return on equity, the shareholders would always like to invest into that company. And also if we watch this uh, uh, ratio and if this ratio is improving year after year, then the company is actually making uh, a more return for the shareholders and company is a growth company and more and more shareholders will be attracted towards that company. On the other hand, if the in return on equity is not improving, rather it is falling, then the shareholders uh, will not be interested and it will lead to the share price fall in the market. So return on equity is the most important matrix for the investors as well as for the, the owners or the professional managers who manage the company and they keep a close watch and uh, if the return is if return on equity is not doing well so they will always try to uh, make some kind of uh, or take some kind of measures to improve it now the return on equity uh, should be ideally speaking it should be above say 12 to 15 percent uh, because uh, the shareholders would expect this kind of a return from their investments because uh, investing in equity is uh, risky and uh, they want a, a better return compared to a fixed deposit. Generally a fixed deposit gives about 7 to 8% return. So if uh, anybody wants to shift from fixed deposit to uh, investing in shares, he would at least desire a return very close to about 15%. So uh, this return has to be uh, between a range of 12 to 15 and uh, more the better. If uh, the uh, company is able to get a higher return, the shareholders will be attracted towards that company. So now let us look at uh, how much return on equity the, uh, the company like Tata Steel has earned uh, in past. So if you see in this uh, picture or in this graph, uh, it is giving you a return on equity for the last uh, four years or five years. It is, it is giving a return on equity for the five years from 2010 to 2014. And we can clearly see that a return on equity has declined from 2011 where it was 68% which was very high. Then it started coming down to 52% and now uh, in 2013-14 stabilized around 28-27%. Though a return of 28% or 27% is a very good return on equity, but uh, there is a clear uh, downtrend uh, in terms of return on equity uh, of Tata Steel. And, uh, Perhaps it can be the reason can be that uh, they have been servicing a very high debt. So a lot of uh, uh, interest has been paid on the borrowed capital. So which is leaving a little less for the shareholders. Uh, so return on equity has uh, shown a declining trend because of that reason. So that can be a possible reason. So now we will understand what is return on capital employed. Now this is done which a company has earned on its total capital, whether it is borrowed or whether it is uh, I mean, taken from the shareholders or whether it is coming from free reserves uh, of the company. So whatever money which the company has deployed, so we calculate what is the return a company has got on that. So that is called the return on capital employed. Now return on capital employed, the formula for that is earning before interest and tax, which is also called EBIT. 
So EBIT divided by the total capital employed. So we get return on capital employed in terms of percentage. Now EBIT is basically a operational profit of the company which derives from selling its goods and services. ये जो return on capital employed है, that इसका मतलब ये होता है कि company ने कितना return कमाया है अपनी total capital के ऊपर। चाहे वो उन्होंने कोई loan लिया है, चाहे वो equity shareholders का पैसा है, उस पैसे के ऊपर उन्होंने कितना in terms of percentage कमाया है। तो उसके लिए formula होता है earning before interest and tax divided by the total capital employed। और इसको हम operational profit भी बोलते हैं। यानी कि कंपनी के ऑपरेशन से कंपनी ने कितना पैसा कमाया कितनी रिटर्न कमाई नाउ दिस इज एन ऑपरेशनल प्रॉफिट ऑफ द कंपनी दैट मींस द प्रॉफिट व्हिच अ कंपनी डिराइव्स बाय सेलिंग देयर गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज एंड इफ वी गो अलोंग इन टाइम फ्रेम लाइक सपोज हर साल हम इसको कंपेयर करें तो अगर रिटर्न ऑन कैपिटल एम्प्लॉयड बढ़ रहा है तो वी से द कंपनी इज बिकमिंग मोर प्रॉफिटेबल और इसको वी कैन आल्सो कंपेयर दिस प्रॉफिट विद अदर कंपनीज इन द सेम इंडस्ट्री or even we can compare with other industries and find out which business is more profitable than other or agar hum within the industry we dekhe to hum dekhte hain ki which company within the industry is more uh, profitable this tells that how good you are using your uh, capital or your resources now here is the return on capital employed of a company tata motors and uh, on the x axis it is the number of years which are given and on the y axis it is the the percentage uh, of the return on capital employed which is depicted as you can very clearly see that the return on capital employed in 2011 was close to about 25.5% and uh, in the 2012 and then 2013 2014 2015 it's showing a declining trend so from 25 it is coming down to say 24 in 2012 and in 2013 it is coming 21 or 22 and finally in 2015 the return on capital employed has fallen to 21.32 now there can be various reasons for such decline uh, and it clearly shows that uh, the tata motors had not done well in the time frame between 2011 to 2015 because there is a reduction in the return on capital employed of the company so that means they are not using their resources well uh, and uh, that's why the return on capital employed has shown a decline hope you all enjoyed the lecture as much as i did presenting for you do add your comments as it is very encouraging and motivating please do like and do subscribe thank you